it's great when you install a system and it just works. In this vlog series, I am transforming an old three-story house into an eco home while living in my van conversion. So today, what I'm gonna do is wire up the downstairs. Um, I need to get rid of the real nasty junk here. It's obviously dangerous. Um, and just wire it all into my mains box. I want to basically put lights, plugs, dedicated line going to the washing machine um, and put lights and plugs in the room. So it's like, I didn't actually have the lights up, but I can get all the wiring done um, and then replace that in a little bit. Um, it's mostly just running conduit uh, and because it's just all on the surface, it's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Um, and after doing the whole house, um, I'm working on this box. This is going to be totally easy. Um, it's just a matter of just doing it, which is great because that makes me feel confident. I don't have to think too much. It's just about, oh, I want to do this and I know how to do it. So what I'm basically going to do is run the cables down this channel. I'm going to bang in my boxes. So I've got electric boxes for plugs. Um, this is going to junction box. It's going to run up this beam go around the room and feed into the other room. So basically you're gonna start off by just putting on my boxes, uh, nice and easy. Once the boxes are in, I can just join it all up with pipe. Below that, I'm gonna put in a electric box. So these are, this is just a back box, external plastic back box. Um, and it will have this little plastic, so you can put on it, plug, or you can put on a switch, um, anything really, so just put this on as well. I'm going to just have an extra plug down below for a fridge or anything, or free big freezer, anything we'll keep down here, so just another quick job, pop this in. sit down on the sofa pretty shortly. Makes it basically a house when you have a sofa, right? So as you can see, IKEA furniture uh, arrived and it's in place and it looks pretty good actually. Pretty happy I put these lights in, put all the lights in the top. Uh, there's a few more lights again before I start testing and kind of making sure it all works. Um, but these lights here, what I've done is there's a cable, this like fabric cable, um, and to make it lower, you can just kind of unhook it from here. And now it's kind of like more over the dining table itself, and then you can just like loop it again. I've done the same with the light, which goes over the sofa. It's here, or you can unhook it, and you can put it on the other beam, which gives you kind of like, you know, light which is variable over the sofa, or a bit further up. Um, overall, just really happy with progress. And I've put in the kitchen lights, which are just spot, sort of spotlights, so sort of like here. And I can just direct these around the kitchen, however required. And downstairs, um, what I want to do is commission the heat recovery system. What I did yesterday, it's a bit of a mess in here now. Wired up all the plugs, put rings around, put this light in temporarily plugs which go in the other rooms and I also wired in the balcony room properly all into the box now so all the electric now is legit all that horrible nasty dodgy electric is all gone um, and there's a couple of um, earths to wire up um, but like the bulk of it's done um, I need to buy a couple of lights um, but as always uh, that's the game in game buy things over time anyway so what I'd like to do now is wire up this this is the heat recovery unit I've got a plug for it. So what I want to do is you can normally hardwire these in, but I'd like to just stick on a plug because then I can always isolate it and take it out if I need to. This doesn't have its own switch in the box. So I'm going to do that now. 
So there it is, it's wearing away. I've connected one of the switches into the main bathroom because that switch is installed. I'm waiting to do the wallpaper of the small bathroom. Uh, and also this thing, I need to tidy up this kind of mess of cables, um, but it's good enough for me to get it running, check it out, check the program. So if you don't already know, this is a heat recovery um, machine. And basically what it does is it takes dirty, stale, damp, moist air from cooking environments, bathrooms, or whatever, the house puts it in the machine, takes the hot air, heat out of that warm air, and then ex extracts it, and then it brings in fresh air, puts that heat from the old damp air, puts the heat into the fresh air, and then brings it to the bedroom. So in winter, it's a very, very efficient way to have constant airflow in your house, so you don't have to have vents and drafts and all the rest of it. Um, in summer, which it is now, it has a summer bypass, um, so it turns off that function and should mechanically change the direction so it doesn't do any of the heat exchange um, that it would normally do. So what I need to do is just find that basically out, see how to do it. I'm going to go read the manual, da, da, da. check it all out. That's really cool, I can hear it whirring away. That's great. just means that constantly fresh air all day, every day and you can boost it if you're cooking or going to the, having a shower or having a pool. Pretty sweet. So what should be happening with the uh, heat recovery, ooh, that's what I need to do. Need to take this plastic off. Can't come up through the hole if there's plastic in the way. Oh, you can hear it. Look at that, it's amazing. So that's blown in. It means I put that pipe on the right way. And the one in the kitchen, should be extracted, and it is. Uh, and there's another one in this toilet. Uh, which I can check if you can even see. Oh yeah. Taking the air out of the poop room. Check upstairs. Bop, 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 bop. There's one in this bedroom, which will be seeing my creation room. Should be blowing air in. Certainly is blowing air in. Pretty quiet actually. This one should be extracting in the shower. Certainly is. That means I must have got it right. And this one here is blowing in. Lovely. That's amazing. It's great when you install a system and it just works. <laughs> uh, fantastic. So right now I'm gonna start installing the curtain rails. It's just basically putting some hooks up. It's gonna go against that wall across this beam. And then we can basically put the bed into the bedroom and start kind of turning the other one into like a studio working space. Um, it's quite interesting actually, I just realized the other day that as you go through construction, um, you can kind of tell what stage you're in based on the size of screw you're using. So I've been using these to put in like tiny little hinges. Uh, compared with the enormous screws we're using to kind of screw in the roof. These aren't even the smallest ones I have. Um, so it's kind of cool that like you can kind of see where you're going based on your screw size because when you're down to the fine furniture and hinges and delicate work you're using like centimetre long screws um, but at the beginning you're using like 30, 40, 35, 40 centimetre screws doing huge things into the boom beams. So it's nice to be at the small screw stage and not at the big screw stage. And right now we're going to be using smallish screws just to put wall plugs into the plasterboard and put these things up. Easy. Putting the doors, these ones have to be cut and, and routed. It's really helpful. Um, one of our neighbors had some work done, and one of their friends is helping him. So I had Chubby and um, Esteban here, door in, door out, playing a bit off. Because all oh, the other dimensions, the things you can only get the doors square, but the holes aren't square. So there's a bit of messing around. And I didn't have a router, so it's really good to route out the. the the um, hinge faces to fit the existing frames. Super helpful because one person, you can it's really hard even just to pick up the door, they're really heavy. Two people, kind of good to carry the doors around, but three people want to mark it, two people to hold it, 
move in and out is absolutely really, really, really useful to have them. So the two awkward doors which go into the existing frames are in now, but now I need to basically cut the little lock area. So these have just been drilled out uh, and basically need to cut them to fit uh, and then screw them in. So it's not a huge amount, put the handles on and then we've got doors throughout the entire house. Should be quite a big milestone in some ways. And great to get the doors out of the way from where the climbing, climbing wall needs to be. This is not really the best mallet, it's a rubber mallet, but whatever. It's gonna work. installing the storage heater um, for downstairs and there's another one in the main bedroom upstairs. Uh, the idea of the storage heater, um, it's not the most attractive box but kind of fits the room and to be honest um, I'm more interested in like super efficient good systems than like the perfect aesthetic ideal. Um, and basically with this system the idea is that the solar, anything you're not using immediately so you're not running electric or light or oven, it will dump it into the hot water tank and when the hot water tank's hot which won't take a vast amount of time, then it will dump into two other places. The first will be the underfloor heating and it will just bring that to a temperature. So my idea is it will just bake it so it's not cold. And then the rest will go into storage heaters. Um, the storage heaters basically it's this huge mass, really dense high thermal capacity mass which sits inside here and it like basically heats that up in the daytime um, and then releases it at night. Originally these were designed for when you had a cheap tariff in um, in the night time uh, and then people could like use their energy to make heat when it's cheap and then it release it over the day but I'm flipping that on its head for the solar where basically where the energy is free in the daytime I'm going to heat up these blocks and then at the night time you can program when it releases so I'll release it overnight um, to basically keep the house toasty and not have to put on any other form of heating um, and that should like help take us through a lot of the cooler months, maybe just the coldest months of the year, one or two months, maybe even just one month, we need to put on the fire to heat the house. Um, so that's the idea. Uh, so basically, I've just got to wire it in, install it, screw it to the wall, put in the blocks, um, and then we'll be good to go. So these are the bricks, which are thermal stores. They're actually like, they're weirdly heavy for the size. I don't know what's in them. I just basically got to, as I understand, stack them inside. It's kind of insulated box here. It's definitely quite a good mass. Let's see why we don't send them to you with this in. It's a very heavy box. Uh, it's just really weird. I mean, it's like a ceramic sort of thing, but it's super dense. And this stuff's like the uh, chimney style. Uh, insulative material, so I guess these bricks get pretty hot. And then it like releases the energy uh, as you want it. Let's put this back on. Camper car. So today we're going to start rendering the top sort of edge of the house. So this is the museum. 